guests on Keel Heard via the Jack Spring Electric Keel Newsmaker Hotline. Shreveport Police Chief Ben Raymond is here. Chief Ben, thank you for taking time this morning. Most certainly. I appreciate the opportunity. Chief, you made some changes in terms of what calls you will and will not be responding to at this point. Why was the, what were the changes needed? Well, these, these changes have been in discussion for years. The police department has gotten to a point where we respond to everything. So if there's a violent crime, we respond. If your kid won't go to school, we respond. If there's a snake in your bathroom, we respond. If there's a cat that needs a home, we respond. And quite literally, we've become the jack of all trades, but we really aren't. That, that's not what the police department was designed for. And so we've discussed making changes to the types of calls that we, we were willing to go out on for a number of years. This just happened to be a good opportunity because we are short-staffed. We are trying to reduce the calls for service that our officers go to so that we can spend more time focusing on uh, those that we need to, to really be um, be responsible for, those violent crimes, those crimes where there's criminals need to be taken into custody and, and, and public safety emergencies and things of that nature. Chief, run me through that uh, chain of command, probably not the right term. But, I mean, are you the final word in all of these changes? Is there a board you go to? Did you talk to the mayor? What exactly What exactly is the process to put all of these things in place? Yeah, so I went with, to the Chief Whitehorn, uh, who, I, who I deal with on administrative matters in, in a number of cases, Chief Administrative Officer, and obviously got, you know, his 40-plus years of law enforcement experience. And he and I discussed these changes. I actually had a list that had five or six more um, ideas. So the, so the suggestions were brought to me from our internal committee for change, which are senior supervisory members of the police department. They've got 25, 30 years of law enforcement experience, and they help make recommendations to ways that we can progress the police department, um, you know, in towards the future, help me make good decisions. Mm -hmm. And they suggested these, this, mm -hmm. that group did. They reached out to patrol officers, said, hey, what, what types of calls are we spending our time on that really are not law enforcement in nature. So when I took the list, compiled it, asked a bunch of questions, discussed it with Chief Whitehorn, and we kind of moved from there. Chief, Let me ask you about the theft. That's what a lot of people are talking about. Somebody steals something at Walmart, runs out, they don't catch him, he's gone. You're not sending a police officer to that call anymore, right? Under those circumstances, probably not. So let me, let me try to clarify the thefts because I know there's been a lot of I think, yes. misunderstanding. So somebody's stealing an item in Walmart and you call the police. We're coming. We're on our way. We're going we're gonna to put that individual in jail. However, you call and say, hey, an hour ago, a guy walked out of here with a weed eater. Don't know who it is. Don't know, have any video. Don't have a vehicle description. We just made a report for insurance purposes. We're not sending an officer out there. We'll take that over the phone. Now, that doesn't mean we won't follow up with an investigator. We've got property crimes investigators that are still going to follow up on that crime, but there's no need in the patrol officer going out there at that moment because the patrol officer doesn't have the ability to start searching for video and talking to neighboring businesses and do an investigation. They're just making a report. So you're saving that patrol officer 30 or 45 minutes of time that they don't even need to go out there for. There's a person sitting in an office here at the station uh, whose job is to, is to type reports in the system and send them to investigations. Chief, you had said these changes had been sort of uh, in the pipeline for a while, but sort of the word mm -hmm. on the street, the feeling that most folks have is that that because that because we are as a city, not to overstate it, a little strapped for cash, that this is a way to sort of uh, uh, to better manage the police manpower. It, is it a little yeah, of is it a little of both? Can you clear that up for us? Is this sort of a? I don't, I don't think the. It has nothing to do with, with finances. When we, we have money to, to pay for officers and to pay for services and to pay for gas, um, we, we, we are 83 officers down today, and so it does benefit us to not respond to every single call that goes out. And, and again, when I started the conversation, you know, quite literally, we respond to everything, always have. Um, you know, if I have a problem in my house with my plumbing and I call my electrician, my electrician is going to say, call a plumber. But if you call the police department with any concern, we're going to send a police officer. Historically, we would send a police officer out, get on scene and say, hey, uh, I'm a police officer. I'm not a plumber. I'm not an electrician. I'm not a roofer. I can't parent your child. I'm, I don't, I'm not going to get the snake out of your backyard. I don't wrestle alligators. I could go on and on and on. And so we need to rein that back in so that we can focus on catching burglars and robbers and rapists and shooting suspects and people that are breaking into your vehicles. And let animal control deal with those animals. You know, let uh, juvenile services deal with those juveniles. 
let the court system deal with those civil matters. So there are entities that are um, more appropriate to deal with all of those issues that police are always the first to be called on. And so we just want to try to help the public to go to the right uh, organization, the right nonprofit, the right government agency to address their concerns. Let me ask you this, Chief. If I'm in an accident in a parking lot somewhere, private property, my insurance is going to want a police report. You're still going to do that. How is that going to work now, though? Yeah, so actually the insurance doesn't require a police report. They, they want you to go online and fill out a form that's on the uh, uh, DMV website, and we, we either should have a link to our police department. If we don't, I'll check when I get off the phone call. It's called the DPS MV 3011 So basically all you need to know, know, uh, do is exchange information with the, with the driver or the owner of the vehicle that, that, that you struck. Name, information, insurance information, phone phone uh, number. And then you just provide that information on that DPS MV 3011 form. Then you call your insurance agency and say, I bumped into a lady at Circle K and I need a new bumper. Um, neighboring agencies, uh, several neighbor, neighboring agencies have not completed private property action reports in years, and it, it's never been a concern. It's, it's really not. Um, I have family members that are involved in private property accidents, and we don't call the police because 32398, is a statute that specifies what a crash is. And if there's less than $500 in property damage, there's no injuries, it's not a hit and run, it's not a crash. Aaron, you got one more quick. I got one if you don't. Real quick, somebody steals my lawnmower or a bicycle off my carport. You're not coming for that. Mm -hmm. What do I do? You call 673-7300. Uh, you tell me to report the, the stolen item. And then let us know if you do have any evidence. Say, I've got a ring doorbell camera. Um, you know, we're still going to investigate it. It just won't be an officer on scene at that moment. Chief, gotcha. is, there, is, is there any override to this? Say, for example, if a bunch of folks on the city council go, you know, I don't like that $1,000 rule. Is there anything that they can do to, to override these changes you've put in place? Well, I mean, we, we all work for somebody, right? So I report directly to the mayor. So if the mayor doesn't like some of the changes, or you know what, if, if we go for a week and realize that maybe we need to back off on some of these, we will. But, but I want to clarify, many of these, it's not a blanket, we will not respond to this call. Many of these will be dispatched to the supervisor, a sergeant, and, and kind of given some parameters. So let's just talk about the civil matter briefly. If I get dispatched to a civil matter, husband and wife are going through divorce and, and husband needs to get some belongings out of the residence. Well, if it's, if it's just that simple, there's no violence, there's no threats of of violence, then we're probably going to tell you, hey, we don't have time for an officer to respond. Or if we do respond, hey, grab a pair of pants and, and your night bag, and well, we're not going to sit here while you unload furniture. If, however, you say um, that there was a threat, you know, that someone threatened to harm another person or someone's armed with a weapon or something like that, or there was domestic violence involved, then an officer is going to go out. So every call will be different.